Hello, you guys. Happy Sunday. Oh, welcome to Sunday in the Studio with Sandy. I'm Sandy McTeer, in case you didn't know. So happy you guys are here. Hello. Hello, Carol. Happy birthday, Carol Manhart. So good to see you on. Um, and Denise, you were the first person. Van Newkirk? Newkirk? I'm going to butcher that. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, you were the first to comment, so um, I even wrote it down. Denise, message me and let me know what e-packet you want, and I will get that off to you this afternoon. Okay? Thank you. It says blessed, and yes, I feel very blessed. Very, very blessed. Good morning, Yvonne in Australia. All right. Hi, Sue from Ontario. Balmy 33. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, yeah. Well, it being 50 here, um, I remember when we moved to Iceland, and I'm going to talk for a couple minutes, and then we're going to get started. Um, but when we lived in Iceland for two years, when we arrived in Iceland, it was in April, and there were kids outside on the playground playing, and I'm thinking, I'm in a parka, gloves. Um, I have three boys. No, I had, let's see, when we got to Iceland, I was seven months pregnant, and we had our oldest, and he was 13 months old. Um, so... <laughs> I'm thinking, these kids are outside freezing. Well, let me tell you, after you live there a year, you get acclimated to the weather. And the next summer when it was 50 degrees, we had short sleeves on and we were outside just like everybody else. So, because there was sun. So, I see so many of you on that um, that ordered the e-packet too. Thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate it. Um, the uh, e-packet is available on my website. I'll just pop that up one more time. And basically, it's step-by-step -step instructions, pictures. I'm very wordy, if you couldn't tell. Um, and so I like to explain things. And so all of it is in the e-packet uh, with the line drawing as well, um, if you want to paint it. Or you can just paint your own tulip. So looks sunny at your house. Uh, Jessica, I think it's all the lights. <laughs> in my studio, I've got lights everywhere. Um, but yes, it's it's a little cloudy and gloomy outside today. So, so we have the little frame that um, comes with this. The item number for this, I put it in the description of the live, but I got it from CD Wood, my friends at Cover Distributing. Um, and so that is the item number. You can get it there. Last time I checked, it was on sale, um, but it's still a great value for the surface and the frame. So we're going to do a couple things. I shared on my spring tulip um, piece. If you missed that, the live is here on my page. It's also on my YouTube channel. Um, but with that frame around it, oh, I just love it. So we have the daffodil, the tulip, I have a wild iris coming up, and I also have um, a stargazer lily and a couple others. So end up, we'll probably end up with like six of them. So if you order the surface, you might want to get six. <laughs> All right. So let me just show you real quick on the frame. I used um, stencils. So M2 square... M2 squared is a stencil line. I have a Tracy Moreau. This is M23, my favorite stencil in the line. And then M252, I believe, and that is um, the stylized Fleur de Lis. So real quick, um, you can get the M2 stencils on my website, and you can also find them at tracymoreau.net. All right? So what I used on here is a little warm white. I'm going to move my chair out of the way so that I can get in here. Alrighty. And grab a stencil brush. And I'm using um, regular Americano acrylics. Well, hello. There goes my container of brushes. Um, and I wanted to use some warm white. I didn't want it to be really, really bright. So warm white. I'm not going to do the whole frame, but I'm going to give you an idea of how I uh, laid this out. And then let's get a paper towel. We're going to load up. This is a 5 8 stencil brush. I'm just going to pull that paint away from the puddle, load it up, wipe almost all of it off. You're going to think, I have no paint to stencil with. Good little tip. Run it in the palm of your hand. If you can see a big spot of very heavy paint, you have too much paint on your hands. <laughs> on your hands now. And too much paint on your brush. So let's wipe that off. 
And all I did was I laid this in place, trying to keep like flat edges. So like up here that you can't see, let's pull that down. Where there's a flat edge, I would stay away from that. Um, and so I'm just gonna move that stencil. Soft circular motions, you can tape it in place if you want to, or you can just hold it like I'm showing you here. All right, so basically, You'll just move this, and it doesn't matter if the scroll lines up. You definitely can line it up with the next, but I just moved it. Not worrying if it's, you know, flowing right to there because it's all scrolly. It's all going off the edge. Let me get a little bit more paint on my brush. Okay, that's a little too much, so I'm going to show you what I'll do to tone that down if it happens to you. All right, so see how that's just a little bit too bright. So I'm going to um, take the base color, which is slate gray, and we'll take a little bit on our palette here. Just a touch, I'm gonna have to order more of that because <laughs> I am very low and I have too many of these um, in this collection that are gonna have the same color. So if it's too bright, all you need to do is take a three-quarter flat water in your brush, Take some of that gray and just neutralize that warm white just a little. And it'll just take that color down. So the entire frame is done the same way. And then I just toned it down with that slate gray. Very, very watery. All right. So let's move that out of the way. And then the next thing, we're gonna stencil the background. So I went ahead and I put my pattern on. This is such a long piece. I'm gonna zoom out just a touch. There we go, okay. Um, but I went ahead and base coated the tulip with warm white. And then I base coated the stem and the leaf with antique green. And I base coated the butterfly with a thin little, not that one, um, a thin little layer of titanium white, okay? So again, the flower is warm white, the stem and the leaf are antique green, and the butterfly, uh, titanium white. All right, so let's move that out of the way. And let's come to, we're gonna do a little stamping and a little stenciling in our background. And so I wanted to take the um, Filor de Lis stencil here, um, and just kind of put it here and there. It doesn't all have to go the same direction. You can turn it sideways um, to get the uh, look that you want. I will say on this piece, I do not like that. I should have put one coming from the side so that they're not, you know, kind of cookie cutter. Uh, so I'm gonna do that on the demo piece here. Um, again, you want to load up your brush with that warm white, wipe almost all of it off. Thank you so much. Why the brighter white for the butterfly? Karen, I wanted the butterfly just to, um, just to be bright from the beginning. It is a little subdued, so let me bring that over and show you. Um, let me get real close so that you can see that butterfly. So I just wanted him to be him, her, whatever. I just wanted the butterfly to be a little bit brighter. Okay, so we've wiped off that stencil brush and let's line up our stencil. So I'm gonna come right up here and I don't care if I have it solid, all right? So meaning the image. If I miss areas, that's fine. Soft circular motion, counterclockwise, clockwise. And there again, if you get this too bright when you do it, all you have to do is do a wash of the um, slate gray over it or you can take a paper towel right after you do it, and that'll kind of take it down. Also a baby wipe. Baby wipe will take a little too much off, um, but see how it's a little bit darker in some areas, lighter in some areas, and that's what I love. So let's come over here and do the same thing. And just take that right off the edge. Soft circular motion. You can apply more pressure to that brush as you feel like the paint's kind of coming off. All right, so, and again, a lot of times I just take my finger, just kind of soften that. All right, let's come over here and bring one. Let's come right from the side. 
And again, have not reloaded my brush yet. Soft circular motions. Let's bring that one. <laughs> Let's do that right there. Okay. So I am going to look periodically. I will look um, at the comments. Chris, thank you so much for putting that link in. Um, <laughs> you know that saying where like squirrel. So that's typically what I do when I look at the comments um, is that I get a little distracted. And so I'm going to try and limit, but at the same time look when I can, all right? Okay, so we have that one there. Let's bring in this one, and I want to put that one this direction. Such a great stencil. So I am going to pick up just a little bit of paint. But what I love in this series, again, same surface, same stencils, same stamp, um, stamps, which is hilarious. I um, have a hard time keeping up with this little postage cancellation stamp from the grunge set. And the grunge set's quite large. I should just put it back in its package. Um, but I, <laughs> it's so small that I've lost it so many times. So let's put this one right there. Okay, good, good, good. And then you can always test it with your frame. You can always put your frame on and see, okay, you know, what do I, or you don't have to put the frame on at all. You can leave the frame off if you want to. You know, I think this is pretty without the frame. So completely up to you, or if you're using another surface, you definitely can come back in and put that in other areas, all right? So I'm gonna grab this. I'm not a big fan of these. I think I shared that with you guys last week, um, these little foam brushes, but I'm gonna show you how you can load your stamps with the foam brush or um, just making a little runway. So let's move that out of the way. I'm gonna get some warm white back out. There we go. And then you wanna take a flat brush, a little bit of paint, kind of pull it, make a little runway, very, very thin. And I like to go both ways, up and down, left and right. And then I will take my little cancellation postage stamp, touch it into my little runway, and you'll see that it has transferred the paint on there. And those words do go a certain way, it doesn't really matter, but, and then you're just gonna lay that in place. All right, so you can do it that way. Let me zoom in just a bit. Or you can tap it on with a makeup, one of those little makeup wedges, or a sponge, but you just want to make sure that it's flat. In fact, I'm going to lay that down. Tap, tap, tap. And you'll get uh, probably a brighter image. If you feel like it's going to be too bright, you can take it to a paper towel and just lightly dab it. See, that didn't happen at all. Hello. Press it down. All right. When that happens, we're going to redo it. So a little bit more paint. There we go. And it doesn't matter if it lines up exactly. Okay. And this is, like I said, from the Grunge Stamp Set. Um, I have this on my website. So does, let me find her link. Um, paintingwithdeb.ca also carries some stamps, some Stampenda stamps. And so does Lana Lamb. Lana Lamb also has. So if you're looking for some Stampenda stamps, I carry them um, on my site, like I said, and then so do those ladies, all right? So now let's go to my favorite stamp, the Vintage Note. And this one, again, let's pull that paint down. And you don't have to use the whole thing. You just wanna tap that paint on. Oh, and I have a really cool idea to share with you guys, or a tip. Um, okay, now we're going to lay this in place, but I, again, don't want to lay the whole thing. So I'm going to slightly lift up on the back of it, press down, come over here, slightly lift, and then I do want to take a little bit of that off. 
the leaf, just so it shows up behind it. A little bit there. Let's get some more. I like the triangular makeup wedges. Yes, those are nice too, um, Lisa, because then you can just cut off the tip when you're done. So, all righty. And then we'll put some down here. And a little there. <laughs> you can never have enough of this stamp, I have to say. It is my go-to favorite. All righty. I do want a little bit more right there. Okay, I think that we are good. All right, so let me show you real quick with the stamps. This came up last week, um, and I said I'm very lazy about washing mine. With paint on them, you definitely want to wash them. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with these. They're the um, Magic Erasers, and they come in sheets. These, I think I got at the Dollar Tree. Um, so hand sanitizer. And I'm just going to run that around on my finger. And then I'm just gonna run it right on this magic sponge, okay? Do you see how it's taking the paint to a liquid so that you can rinse it and take it off? Does the same thing with ink. I was shocked. See all the ink that came off this stamp when I did it earlier? Um, getting ready for today and I thought, all right, I need to clean that stamp real quick. Look, hello. Okay, now, anytime you use hand sanitizer on your stamps, you want to rinse them out with water and soap, all right? Because if you don't, I'll show you what'll start to happen is that it'll get a little brittle, all right? So, so let's stay right down here. I'm gonna zoom in and we're gonna take care of the stem and the leaf first. Let's move that over so we can get the palette in there. All right. Yes, that grunge stamp is amazing, right? Terry Casper, you just jumped on. You won one of the um, giveaways from last week. So I'm trying to find it because I have it right here. So you won the stamp set. So Terry, message me your um, mailing information and I will get that out to you tomorrow. All right, so let's take care of our leaf first. We're gonna use, uh, it's base coated with antique green. All right, we're gonna use some plantation pine. And in the e-packet, I gave some substitutes for the media line that, um, that I'm using in this. I used the Payne's Gray. Is there somewhere else to get? You can get that magic eraser at any grocery store. Yep, any grocery store at all. Alrighty, so Payne's Gray also comes in the Americana line, but this is my go-to favorite, love it. Um, and then I'm also for the tulip, I'm gonna use some quinacridone magenta. And when we do that, we'll probably come back down to the leaf and put a little bit of that on as well. All right, so I'm gonna get out some plantation pine. Like I mentioned, it's base coated with antique green. And then my highlight color, you have a couple options. I used matcha green. Um, that one, but you can use citron green, celery shoots, a new color um, that came out in 2021. So, and then even antique green with a little white or warm white looks really, really pretty, okay? So I'm gonna get out a little Payne's Gray and let's go ahead and get out the matcha green. Don't need a lot and a little antique green. Okay, so again, Plantation Pine, Payne's Gray, Matcha Green, and Antique Green. So I'm gonna use a small flat brush. Um, like a size six will work great, size eight's fine too. And a three-eighths angle, okay? So three-eighths angle, if you're not familiar with an angle brush, it has a toe and a heel. The toe is the longer part, and that's where I'm gonna load the paint, all right? Let's rinse that off. Okay, so I'm gonna take care of the, um, the flip on the leaf first. So on the toe of the brush, I'm gonna pick up some Plantation Pine, Little Paints Gray, and then you wanna work that in. That's a lot of Paints Gray. Okay, and I, had, I have some moisture in my brush, just a little bit of water, and there is a flip on this leaf. So I'm gonna float that color right down that flip 
and go right outside the leaf there. Hello. And then get a little bit more moisture. See how that's dragging? I don't have enough moisture in my brush. So I need a little bit more. Ooh, that Diet Coke's kicking in. <laughs> right into my hand. That's what you want. You want that gradation, that bleed of color. It's very soft, nothing outlined. See how my brush is flat? Because if you're up on the chisel, you're gonna get an outline, you're gonna get a line. And that's not what we're going for. We're going for this blood gradated paint. It's a little bit darker where I floated it, and then it gradates out. Okay, so let's turn that over so you can see that stem. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit more of the same color. And again, I'm keeping that right on the toe of the brush. So I don't have anything on here except a little bit of water. Alrighty. And I'm going to do it right along the base of that flip. So right on that side of the leaf, a little bit more of that color. You know, with painting, it's all about the lights and the darks and where you put the light in the dark. You have to have one to see the other. So, putting that float of dark right on that side. Okay, it's just gonna start giving that leaf some dimension. And then I am gonna pick up a little bit of water on my brush. And again, just Payne's Gray, Plantation Pine on the toe of that brush. Again, look how I'm loading it. And flipping that over, working it in just on the toe. And I'm gonna slide down from the tip. Oops, a little dark. I'm gonna slide down and I'm gonna mimic the shape of this leaf with very thin little lines. It's gonna look very strange at first. We're gonna tone it down. Get a little bit of that variegated lines of veins and let's dry that. Thank you, Molly Ann. I appreciate you doing that. All right. Okay. And so while we're working on the leaf, I am going to come back with a little bit of antique green. Not that this is going to show up but it's bugging me right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna take care of this white from the stamp. Okay, and I do want to, um, I do want to show you guys, most of you probably are aware on how to put a pattern on, um, but this came up recently on the free heart party event that I did. Um, if you guys missed that, what a great event. Um, and I think you can still register for it. I'm gonna find the link. I think you can still register for that. There's the link for it. Um, and I believe you have until Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so you'll wanna go ahead and get registered for that if you're not, and look at all the amazing artists. Okay, so we have that very dimensional leaf now, right? I'm gonna come back in, rinse my brush. On the toe of the brush, I'm gonna pick up some plantation pine and some antique green. I don't know if I did this in my directions or not, to be honest with you. Um, I think I did because it's very soft looking here. So I'm just gonna go right over on the left side of that flip, okay? And that's just putting those um, Payne's Gray lines into that leaf instead of looking like they're sitting on top, okay? And then let's come back to our palette, a little bit of matcha green, a little bit of warm white, a little bit more matcha. And the thing is when you do this, if you float that color on, you're like, oh, that's just way too bright. Do a wash of antique green over it and it'll tone it down. All right, so we're gonna pull this color on that left side of the leaf. So notice the toe has the paint toe of that brush. I'm just going to float that right along that edge. A little bit more. You have to have moisture in your brush to get it to move. 
So a little touch of water or a little touch of Josonia's Fast Dry Glaze will work just fine. And then we'll shade right down here. Don't be afraid to use those blenders that you've got on the your hands there. Just soften it with your fingers. Okay, a little bright right there. All right, now I'm gonna come back with that same color. This time I'm gonna pick up a little bit of antique green, little bit of warm white, work that into that brush. So I still had the matcha green, picked up a little bit of antique green, little bit of warm white, work that in. Need a little moisture, I can tell my brush is dry. And then, well, glad you're here, Cindy. You don't have to apologize for being late, just glad you made it. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I want to add that highlight on this side. So I'm going to float that color on. Again, right at an angle. You don't wanna be on the chisel edge. You want your brush at an angle. And that brighter spot right on that top side of that flip. And I am going to zoom in when we get down to this guy because I love, love that right there. Let me zoom in. So on this piece, I just, like on tulips, um, and I have some behind me. I don't know if you saw them. I love fresh flowers in my studio. Um, but, you know, it kind of wraps around the stem. And so I love, love, love this little area right here. I know it's not that big of a deal, but it just, it makes me happy. I just love the way that that looked. So um, we're going to take some of that color and really accentuate that top part. And then right into the rest of that leaf. And I'm not too fussed that this is showing. If that bothers you, then you can stamp before you put your um, base coat on. You can put your line drawing on. That will help you see where your design is and where it would be best to put those stamps. Okay. So now I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white touch of plantation pine on the toe of that brush. Soften that out just a little bit. We're going to soften it, and then I'm going to brighten it up. That's also going to help take that um, stamp image there away. Just a little bit more. All right, let's dry that. Okay, I'm going to take that same mixture, just a little bit of plantation pine, a little bit of white, and I'm just going to lightly float that color on in this section, and then just run my finger back and forth. And what that's gonna do for you, not that you could see it because I don't think I was on camera, hello, um, it's gonna give you just some variations in your green, okay? So you can see that antique green, you can see the matcha and the warm white with the highlight, but then a little bit of plantation pine and warm white. Um, again, just to do a little bit of a dusting in that area. You could dry brush it or you can float it on, use your finger and soften it out. Okay. All right, so we'll just take that same brush that we have with that plantation pine, little bit of warm white, and I'm just gonna lay that in. Not a lot to the leaf, actually. Okay, let's come right down here, and where those two meet, I'm gonna take on the toe of my brush a little plantation pine, a little Payne's Gray. A little plantation pine, little Payne's Gray. Had a little too much Payne's Gray, so I wiped off my brush. Got some more plantation pine. And again, a little bit of moisture just to get that to move. So right here where the leaf meets the stem, we're gonna float in that darker color to separate those two. See how now we have a defined stem line and leaf. Right to there. And then if you need to fix up your shading, you know, going up, if you went over at all with some of your highlights, you can come back in and clean that up with a little bit of that plantation pine, a little bit of Payne's Gray. Okay. So let me zoom out just a little so you can see how that 
leaf just became very dimensional. Looks like it's wrapped around that stem, right? Um, and I'm all about making it look the way you want it to look. So if you want to brighten it up, if you want to lighten it up, you can always come back in with some antique green, put a little bit of that coloring in. And then, like I said, when we do the tulip, I'm going to bring a little bit of the um, Conacridone magenta onto the leaf, just to kind of tie it in just a little. All right. So now let's go to the stem. Now, when I did the stem, I did not have the butterfly on. Um, so sometimes when you have things that are in the way, I just go over them. <laughs> I really don't want to mess up my butterfly. So I'm just going to skip it. So all I'm doing right now is with this number six flat, I'm just going to do a little bit of that antique green right over that white. The antique green is pretty transparent, but it's such a gorgeous yellow toned green. All right, let's go to our quarter inch angle. So same thing, has a toe and a heel, just a smaller angle brush, get that wet. I typically always start with my brushes wet and then I dry them off. Um, I just feel like the paint goes on the bristles better instead of starting with a dry brush, all right? So we're gonna come in on the toe of that brush with Payne's Gray, Plantation Pine, work that in. Now, when you have a runway like that with a bigger brush, you wanna be sure not to come right in the middle or that paint's gonna go right to the toe, and I mean, excuse me, to the heel. And we don't want the, the toe and the heel to have paint on it. We just want the toe. So sometimes you can always pinch it on the heel and look and see if you have any paint. But when you do that, it dries out the heel. So you definitely have to put a little bit more moisture back in your brush. Okay. Now let's turn this again so that my hand's out of the way and you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to start right up underneath the um, stem here. Make sure I was on camera. And then I'm gonna turn that brush at an angle and I'm gonna pull it just like we did on the, um, the daffodil last week. Just pull that brush at an angle. The stem's done exactly the same way. Uh, the leaf is just slightly different than the daffodil last week. Hello. Little too much paint. See how that paint's not really coming off that brush? You know why? Because it doesn't have enough moisture. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more water in that brush. Whew, I don't know if those lights are dragging it. But super dry. Okay, so we've got dark on one side, the right side. We're gonna put um, highlight on the other side. So I'm gonna rinse that brush out, get a little bit of antique green, warm white. Let's work that in, the toe of our brush. What size brush? Linda, I'm using a qu uh, quarter inch angle shader. Okay, so I have these in three sizes on my website, half inch, three eighths, and quarter inch. Um, I sell them as a set. So you get a much better price on them as a set, uh, but I love angle brushes. Just, oh, they make painting so much fun and so much easier trying to get into an area um, where you just want that paint to go, not on the whole thing, and that brush is cut or pulled to create that angle so that you have a nice toe and heel, okay. So a little bit there, get that highlight on. And I'll do this in a couple of passes. So now I'm gonna take um, a little bit more of that antique green, warm white. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. And thank you very much, Molly Ann, for answering that. Okay, so put a little bit down here. And right along the top. So let me pull this up so that you can see it or zoom in so that you can see that better. Because you know when you get flowers and you wanna cut them at an angle on the stem so that um, the water can go right up. So there's a little bit of a dimensional element right here on the stem. I'm gonna put that highlight 
with a very dry brush. Hello. It usually happens to me in the summer, not in the dead of winter, but I guess the lights are a little bit hot today. And I'm just gonna pull that right down to that tip. Okay, so see how that makes that look like that stem is dimensional instead of just flat. So let's come back up, pick up some matcha green. This time, a little bit of warm white. And let's highlight that stem. Again, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do it from the top to the bottom. I kind of want that color to go on and then I'm just gonna soften it with my finger. Okay, I like texture, I like that sketchy look. Um, and I feel like doing it that way. Pull this down so you can see. Gives you a little bit of that sketchy look to that color. Oh, I love that. All right, let's come right down here. And since I love to layer my paint, I can still see like that that really nice, see that that bright yellowish tone? That's from the antique green. So love that you can still see that right through that color. All right. Now let's zoom out just a little. I just looked at the camera and I half of my stem showing. Okay, and then we do wanna take a little bit of Payne's Gray, a little bit of Plantation Pine, and right up underneath our um, leaf down here, we're gonna float some of that color right up underneath it. I'm just gonna soften it with my finger. Okay, and then a little above it. So again, anywhere you have elements that touch, you wanna separate those. And again, try not to make it look outlined. All right, so, oh, I love how dimensional that looks. Okay, now I did come back with a little bit of um, dry brushing, and my go-to brushes for dry brushing are the Mezzaluna brushes. Um, they're a mix of kind of a soft and stiff bristle, and um, they just work so well. So I'm going to take a little bit of antique green, a little bit of warm white, mix that together. Dry paper towel. Take some of that off. And again, this is just going to give it a little bit of that sketchy dry brush look, which I'm a fan of. If you're not a fan of dry brush, by all means, don't put it on. Okay, so I'm a little to the left and to the middle, but I'm staying away from that darker side. And I started with antique green, a little bit of warm white. Wipe off too much there. I'd rather wipe off too much and have to get more paint than come here with too much and have to get it off because then that's a pain. Okay, you could also dry brush a little on the leaf if you wanted to. Just a touch, same thing on that flip. Okay, but oh, I love, love, love. Let me zoom out. Did I say I love it? Look how dimensional that stem is now. Of course, we have our dark, we have our light, and that dry brush in the middle that just kind of brings it all together. Um, now I am gonna take a little bit of matcha green, a little bit of warm white, load it up, wipe it off. And just in a couple of spots, a little bit brighter. So I'm a little bit there. See the difference between like the top and the bottom of that stem? So maybe a little bit of an area where I have more, um, where the light can hit it a little bit more than say where the leaf is. Um, and then automatic little shadow for the butterfly there, All right? And then a little dry brushing right here on that little section 
right there. Ugh, it's just really gonna make that stand out, right? Love that. Okay, let's come right back up here. I'm gonna get my, my 3 8 angle. A little touch of Payne's Gray. A little touch of Payne's Gray on the toe. And then I'm gonna work that in. So see how I'm working that in flat? You can see the water's kind of moving it a little to the right. And then I am gonna walk it to the right just a little bit so that you can see how that color is very heavy. All, you know, it's almost like a value um, strip where you can see black all the way down to the slightest shade of gray. So darker there, thins out as you move away. What I wanna do is right up underneath the flower, I want to do a little shading, but then I also wanna do it at an angle. Um, let me zoom in so you can see this better. So right up underneath, and then I'm going at an angle a little to the right. So it's not just underneath the, uh, the flower, just to give it a little bit better shadow, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so let's, I, I was gonna say, let's do the butterfly, but no, let's do the flower. I'm chomping at the bit to do the flower. <laughs> Um, and look, guys, I'm notorious for this, for putting out way too much paint. You see how much paint we did? I mean, we used very little, all right? Again, it's thinned down and it's layered. And to me, you just get such great dimension when you do that. Um, so let's go up to our flower. And I'm going to use a number eight flat brush and my Conacridone Magenta. Now, I did give some substitutes in the uh, packet um, which I don't have right here, but I think berry cobbler, um, any magenta color that you like. What I love about the media line is it's transparent um, and so vibrant because it's highly pigmented. It is my go-to paint to paint with. All right. So with my number eight, let's get it wet, dry it off. Let me show you how I'm going to load this. So I'm gonna come right to the edge and just kiss that puddle of paint with the chisel edge of the brush, and I'm gonna work that in. Okay, so my brush doesn't have a lot of moisture in it. I did get it wet, dry it off, but I just wanna work that in. And if you feel like you have too much, swipe it across a paper towel, okay? So I'm going to start at the tops of these petals, and they're going to be extremely, extremely bright at first. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how we're gonna tone it down, okay? So, and because I don't have a lot of water in my brush, see how it's kind of splitting a little bit? That's fine. Um, actually, I like it when that happens. Now, this one is curved. You wanna pull these in the direction that that flower petal is going. All right, so a little bit more. Don't worry about being stuttery. We're gonna do a couple of passes um, of color on here, but I'm pulling and flicking. So see, I'm not pushing and pulling. That's gonna paint it too heavy. I want this very um, sketchy, variegated look. So a little bit darker here, a little bit lighter there. Stutters, which is going to give it just a really pretty look. And then on this one, we have a flip. So let me back up just a second and go to our 3 8 angle. I'm gonna show you. So what I did was I painted the base coat, hello, let's pull down, in the direction of the petal. So you can see those markings when you're looking at it in person. I don't know if you can on camera as well. Um, but then I left a little bit of a space where that flip is and a little bit of space here. And once I was done, I just took my brush with water with warm white and went over the whole thing so that it's not just very defined and outlined. But I wanna shade this a little, just to so you can see the petals better. And so I'm gonna use my angle brush, again, on the toe, a little bit of uh, Conacridone Magenta, tiny touch of Payne's Gray, 
not that much Payne's Gray Sandy. <laughs> um, and it's going to give me actually the color that's quinacridone violet in that line. All right, it's just gonna give me a purpley, darker value so that I can come in and float right between these petals so that you can see them. Very loose and light. Okay, so see how now I just have such dimension on that flower. All right, let's come in here. Right at the base of that petal. Again, that's quinacridone magenta and Payne's Gray. If you don't have those, Payne's Gray and a little bit of whatever pink it is that you're using. Um, if you're using pink, you can be, you know, purple. I think a purple tulip would be gorgeous. Okay, so right around that flip, pull some of that color, and then I'm just gonna keep that color right there in that flipped area. Okay, again, just to get that dimension. And we'll strengthen these up later. Um, trying to look right here. I've got that little opening. Again, quinacridone magenta, a little Payne's gray. And then we'll turn that over. And just to keep all of our petals separate, I'll go ahead and do that little float of color right there. Okay, so now we can see all of our flower petals. We certainly don't want that heavy old line right there. Okay, I just lifted all that color. Hello, Sandy, get on camera. <laughs> all righty. Dry brushing will break down the bristles much quicker because you're using it against... Yes, it does. Good point, Judy. Um, and that's another reason why I like to use my Mezzaluna brushes for that. All right, let's go back to the number eight flat. And I'm gonna pick up on the chisel edge some of that quinacridone magenta. And then I'm going to pull from the bottom up. Too much water in my brush. A little bit more. Pull down from the edge. And then we're gonna do the same thing from the bottom. So I pulled this from the bottom and as you're doing it, you wanna pull with the direction of the petal. So I'll pull up. Again, I'm flicking it. I'm pulling and flicking. So see how it leaves a little bit of that center? And then I'll do the same thing. Pick up some, that paint. Let's finish that off. Pull it from the bottom up. Go outside, just swipe that in. Okay, little too high there, which I'm not gonna fuss about it right now. Okay, now let's dry this, and I'm gonna show you how to tone it all down. It's gonna look ugly before we get to the pretty stage. All right, this is the scary part when I'm painting, it is anyway, where I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? And I probably should just put this aside and leave it alone. <laughs> um, but I promise you on the other side of that frustration um, or that ugly, period in our painting. Um, on the other side of that, that's your gorgeous painting waiting to happen. Okay, so that's completely dry. Now I'm gonna take my uh, number 12 flat, get it wet, pick up some warm white, and I'm just gonna work that in. So I'm gonna do a wash of warm white over that flower. Okay. So right over all of it. See how it's toning it down? Um, and I did this when I was painting the original. Um, it was way too bright. And once I did this wash, even though I come back and I put some of that heavy magenta on it, oh, I just love the softness it gave it. 
So because it's a step I did when I designed it, I'm going to do it and show it to you now, how you can just tone that down. Definitely want water in your brush to get it to move, give you more of a wash than heavy paint. We don't want to take away what we put on. We just want to subdue it right now. Okay, now I'm gonna dry that. <laughs> Linda said, I have a problem when I get to the ugly stage. Um, want it to jump over that part. I totally, totally agree. It it's, can be frustrating, but you just gotta keep pushing at it. It's paint at the end of the day, right? Okay, so now let's come back and I'm gonna take a smaller flat brush. So this is like the six that I used earlier on the stem. And I'm gonna pick up some of that magenta, work that in just on the chisel edge. And I'm going to touch and pull, touch and pull. Touch and pull. Again, flicking that as you come with the shape of that petal. If you have too much paint when you do this, it is going to, um, it, it, you'll be able to tell right away. It's just a little too much. You won't get that um, stutter when you, if you paint it with heavy pressure, okay? So again, I'm just touching and pulling. Right from the bottom, same thing. Okay, and then again, just like to take my finger and kind of soften that out. All right, so I'm gonna come back with my 3 8 angle. On that petal, I want, I have like a little vein that goes down the front two petals. So a little bit of quinacridone magenta, tiniest touch of Payne's Gray. Tiny, tiny. Okay. And I have right here, I have a, a little vein line that goes right down that center. And it's going to go right around to the base of that petal, okay? Again, it's looking very dark, right? Compared to the original. I promise you it comes together. All right, and then on this one, we'll do that. Right along there. Because the petals that are right up front will have more detail than those petals in the back. The petals in the back have very little done to them, all right? So I'm going to come back in with that same coloring. Let's do a little bit more shading. Payne's Gray and Quinacridone Magenta. And then right along the back of that, just like we did on the leaf, you're going to take some of that darker color. We're going to go right along that edge. right up here. So many times in my, um, when I'm painting my design, I will shade around my element so that I don't lose the shape of it because I'm not one that likes to come back and put my pattern on. If I do it once, that's enough. Okay, get a little bit of that shading on. And then right in here, same thing. I want to make that nice and dark. Now, if I want to open that up a little bit more, um, and I think I kind of do, I can just push right into that petal and then right out to the edge. Okay, again, just to give that illusion that that um, petal is kind of concaved in. A little bit of shading at the base. I'm just doing a soft little float of that color. If you want to round it out a little, like that got a little flat, I can round it out just a little bit. 
A lot of different, hello Sandy. Get that right off. Okay, a little bit at the base of that petal. All right. Now I'm gonna come back on my, um, my big petal here. Again, the two in the front get a little bit more attention because they are right up front and have a little more detail, but this pink still got a little on the bright side, so I'm gonna to tone it down with a little bit of warm white. Okay, and then we'll take that warm white from the center up. Soften that out. And then right on that flip, a little bit more pink, a little more pink. Just using the chisel edge of that brush, kind of touch and pull. Touch and pull. Okay. I think I took a little shape away right there on that petal. So I'm just kind of going back and forth between the colors, that quinacridone magenta into that warm white. All right, rinse that out. Come back to my angle brush, because I see one place I did not shade real well. Right here. And then I'm just gonna let that kind of trail toward the center. A little bit darker in there. A little bit darker right there, just makes that stand out. Again, my, see my brush is flat. I don't want it to be up on the chisel edge. I don't want to outline. I just want to see the difference between those back petals, front petals, Payne's Gray, a little bit of Quinacridone Magenta right at the base. Okay, thank you guys. Going to dinner, have a nice dinner, Cindy, with your family. All righty. And then I definitely want to separate these two right here in the front. And then we're gonna start putting some bright um, little highlights on them. Okay, so right in here. That quinacridone magenta, a little Payne's Gray. And I'm thinking I definitely need to do something right here. See how that petal looks like it came down a little too far when I painted it. So I'm just going to come back in with my stem color. A little bit of sap green, a little bit of Payne's Gray. And guess what? We're just going to do a little surgery right there. Take that away. Bring that angle right back in. There we go. And anything in the back, if you need to clean up, you can do that with the um, base color. Okay, now I'm going to come back to my quarter inch angle. Now let's start brightening these up just a little bit. I'm going to get some white out and get a little moisture in my brush. And I'm going to pick up just a little bit of white on the toe work that in. If it gets on the whole brush, it's quite all right, to be honest with you, because what we're doing um, is just sliding on this. I have very little paint, but I'm sliding on the chisel edge of the brush to bring some highlight right into that center that you'll see on the finished. And then if you need to soften it, just soften it with your finger. And I'm using white instead of warm white because I want this to be a little bit brighter. And again, you just want to flow with that petal. Okay, you could use a liner brush if you want to. I'm just, 
I like the chisel edge on that angle brush. And again, you want to angle them so that they flow with that petal. Okay, so see how that's coming together. I need a little bit more on that. I really love on my original this very bright area right there. Put it on, wipe it off. Put it on, wipe it off, right? <laughs> and I definitely love this one. Um, I can bring it out just a little. So just a little slide on the chisel edge there. Okay, same thing at the base of these. I don't want to get into my shading too much, but I do have a little bit of that at the base of those petals. The base of those petals. And then right along this uh, flip here, a little bit of that white pulled down. And then all the way down, I'm going to take a little bit of white tiniest touch of quinacridone magenta on the toe of that brush. A little bit more white there. And it doesn't have a big flip on it, but I do want to accentuate this right here. So I'll slide on the chisel edge, come over onto the petal just a little bit, and then back to the edge of the petal. Okay just to brighten that up, just a touch. I want a little bright right back here. Maybe a little touch there, okay? And the, um, like I said, the background color is slate gray. So if you needed to, you could come back in on the toe of that brush and fix up anything, any paint that went outside. Another thing you can do, which I love, let me zoom in to show you. I love using my uh, background color as an eraser or a fixer. Um, so I can come in and if I wanted to give this petal a little bit more of a dip, I can come back in and take that away with that background color and make that petal not so straight. So let's come back up to our flower. I am gonna take that background color and just clean up some of my pink that got a little crazy. A little in there and a little under there. Okay, and then that back petal, same thing. Like here, if you want a little bit more of a dip, pull down. See how that separated those a little bit more? Love that. So I'm gonna zoom out just a touch. All right. And I want to come back in with some more white highlights. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more white on that angle brush and just pull those little strokes around. And you don't have to have as many of those. If you want your flower to be, your um, tulip to be, you know, more solid, by all means, you definitely could do that. I just like those uh, kind of variegated looking tulips with all the different colors. Um, in fact, when I said I was doing a tulip, my mom, I believe it was in Holland, um, they, she sent me a ton of pictures from when they visited the tulip farms and stuff and, oh, I finally found them. So I used one of those photos as my reference. A little bit there. And a little on that edge. Again, remember, since we have dark there, just a tiny touch of that bright, right on the edge of that petal is gonna make it stand out even more. Because that light and dark play off each other. Yeah. All righty. Okay, I'm kind of digging that. I feel like maybe back here, I need to do some brighter white. I like my original where there's just a little bit more white. Very thin. Okay. 
All right, let me just kind of back up and look and see if I want to add any more. A little bit there. You know what liner brush would be really good for this is the 5 Aught, um Detail Liner. This is a Micron. So if you're used to like a long script liner, um, I love script liners, but if not, you need a smaller one. Um, yes, I just licked that. <laughs> um, is the 15 Aught. And so a little bit shorter, but see how very little, I mean, you have very few bristles there. Um, so if you want to do it with the liner brush, you definitely can. Again, I just love how thin that chisel edge is. I don't know if it's going to um, focus. Very thin chisel edge on that angle brush. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Right there. All right. Again, that just accentuates that shape, that movement, so it's not just so flat. Let's put a little right around the top of this petal. Right there, but not a straight line. I'm not, I'm just gonna kind of pull down some lines right there, different lengths, just to kind of highlight that one a little bit more. And then let's get a little bit more right here, just variation in color. This is looking very flat. I guess just one color. All right, I think I'm, I think I'm liking that. Okay, let's go to our butterfly real quick. So I could tweak and play around with that. Um, you know, lots, let me bring this down so you can see side by side. You know, very similar. Um, I really took down the shape of that petal right there when I did the center um, shading. So, you know, just be careful of that. I can always bring it back in, but I like it, so I'm gonna leave it. That's my rule in painting. If you like it, leave it. Um, and then some brighter little spots on your petals too. You can always come back with a little bit of the quinacridone magenta. I like giving you options because if you do something and you're like, eh, I don't like that, and you want a way to fix it, uh, those other options can be your fix. You know, you can come back in with some of that magenta from the edge, just get a little bit darker. Okay, let's go to our butterfly. So I transferred the butterfly, um, the line drawing on, and then I went around it with the fine tip of the identipin, okay? Um, just so that I could keep the outline. I lost some of it when I painted it white, but I can still see it, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is come in and just float this color right at the base of the butterfly. I base coated it in white. His body is black. I'm gonna get a little moisture in my brush on the toe of that angle brush, pick up a little bit of magenta. Just a touch, and then just a tiny touch of white. Tiny, tiny touch. Okay. And then I'm gonna float this color right at the base of the butterfly. So the toe that has the color is right by the body. I'm just gonna float that on. So not, there's not a lot to him. What really makes him come together are those lines, putting the lines in on the wings. And you have a couple of options. I'll show you both. You can use a liner brush or you can use the fine tip of the identipin. And again, just right there. So I did quinacridone magenta, a little bit of white. Now I'm gonna pick up just a little touch of quinacridone magenta. Let's dry that. Hello, Anne, good to see you on. <laughs> Lynn said the fixes are for me. Yes, I have to say, um, you know, if you don't know how to fix something, a lot of times those projects go up against the wall um, or you just don't finish them. Um, 
And I'm all about knowing how to backtrack, fix something up, so I can get it the way I like it. And that's why working in layers, I don't have a lot of heavy paint on here, so I could come back in and easily fix something up if I need to. Okay, so what I did is I just came back with just quinacridone magenta on my brush this time. And I'm just gonna brighten that pink up right in the center, um, or the base of these wings, just a little bit darker. Okay, let's flip that around and give you whiplash. All righty. And then we need black paint. So just lamp black, whatever black you have will work. You could use Payne's Gray for that matter if you wanted to. And I'm gonna come in with my rigger. So um, you can use a liner brush. The rigger is just, um, it's similar to a liner, but it's flat. So when you flatten it out, it has a chisel edge to it. Um, so I'm just gonna take that and paint the body. And then very, very lightly, oh, let me get a little bit, you want a little moisture in that brush to get that paint to flow off. A Little bit right on the antennas. Nice thin little line, okay. And then I'm gonna show you, you can use the um, liner brush. In fact, let's use the Micron, okay. So this is the 15 aught. Okay, and I have these on my site. Um, and then we'll pick up some of that black paint. My preferred way is to do the pen, but I'm gonna show you both, all right? So I can come here, I can see my lines still. I don't know if you can. And I can paint those right in, a little bit of that black paint. Let's see that going all the way down there. So, see how that liner brush will give you a nice thin little line, but I have to work a little too hard for it. <laughs> so, fine tip of a Sharpie marker or the fine tip of the Identa pen is going to do that better for you. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to the rigor. I think I like the length of this one better. Let's see if the, let's get that outlined for us. Mo better, much better. Okay, so again, you can use the, um, Rigger, or you can go back with the fine tip, like I'm gonna show you here. And I can barely see my lines, but we're gonna go with it. You can always come back and transfer your pattern on if you need to, to see those lines. Let's see how much faster that goes. I, I just personally like the look of it much better. Um, and it's easier to do, okay? And then down here, again, right along the wing. And then we've got there. You can use the fine tip of a Sharpie marker. You just want it to be fine tip, nice and thin. And then the edges, I don't, um, I don't waste my pen on that. I would definitely use paint. Okay, hopefully those are matching up. All right. And this, the wings are at a slight angle, so this side's kind of lifted up a little bit, so why that one's not so flared out and full. Um, but I am gonna use the black paint now to come in, in here. This is one of those things that I would have it resting in my lap, 
so I can see it a little bit closer. Nothing wrong with holding your piece and getting it, you know, close so you get those details in. It is when you're on camera, but. <laughs> okay, and then, wow, that got really big down here. There again, if you base coat your butterfly in, you can always line your pattern back up, transfer those lines so you get them exactly where you want them. I typically just draw my butterfly out and hope that they look the same on both sides. Most of the time they do. Okay, let's make this a little bit. All right, then this side. Again, I'm just using that. This is a 10 aught rigger, currently out of stock, but you, not sure if Tracy Moreau has them on her site or um, the brush guys. And on the brush guys, you can use Sandy MC for a discount. I do not, do not, yeah, I do. I have one right there. So at the brush guys. And again, not sure if they have them in stock or not, but this is the 10 aught rigger. I have them on order. Um, oh, you know where else you might be able to find them? is here's one place uh, marine baker might be able to find them there i don't think lana lamb has black gold or uh, excuse me faux squirrel and then also jellybean.net you might be able to find the tenot liners there as well okay just to give you some options all right so when i um wiped that off with the baby wipe i wiped that pink off and i want to come back Get that coloring so it matches the rest of my butterfly. Right in there. Okay. Now, let's do some, um, we'll do a tiny little highlight. Doesn't look like I have a highlight on my finished one, but a little highlight on the body of white would be good. And then I'm just going to take that same brush. You can use a stylus if you want to, but I'm going to do tiny little dots on the wings, on that black part. And it is best if you hold it straight up and down, meaning the brush, the brush handle straight up facing the sky. Okay, very random. Okay, yes, I love the, um, I have a magnifying light as well, works wonders. Okay, let's zoom out just a touch. Okay, when I wiped that um, black, got in my background, so I'm just gonna clean that up just a little bit. And let's do some shadows. So I'm gonna use the Let's see here. I'm gonna use a number five flat, get it wet. And we're gonna come right over here to our Payne's Gray. And the reason, that's black, I don't wanna use that. Uh, the reason I like to use Payne's Gray is because it's transparent. And in the media line, it's transparent. Um, and it's not as harsh as black, okay? So I'm gonna mix it with water. And I wanna get it to a thin gray not real super dark, so you wanna test it. It's a good idea to test it on a piece of paper so that you can see how dark it is. But we wanna put this right up underneath our butterfly. So I'm gonna to touch right at the edge of the wing and up, little tiny shadow. A little shadow there, a little shadow there. It's better to start thin and light than to start really, really heavy. And I think I'm gonna to have to come back in with some of that gray paint right there because it's at least what I'm seeing on camera is smudged. Okay, so once you put that um, cast shadow on, if you need more, make sure it's dry because um, if I go right back over it wet, it's just gonna lift. So, and then you don't want it to be hot either. 
And I did get uh, another shipment of these. If you're not familiar with it, the Heat It Craft Tool. Oh my gosh, a must have for any painter or crafter, I have to say. Okay, so see, just darken that. And it just lifts it right up off that surface, right? Thank you so much, Linda. I love the leaf and the stems. Now let's zoom out just a touch. And we're gonna do the stem and the leaf first, shadow, and then we'll go back up to the flower. We are on the home stretch, people. All right, so same mixture. Again, nice and thin and light. You can always darken it up. But I wanna start not touching the leaf. I'm gonna start over here. Very thin, and then I'm gonna lay my brush flat to get that nice cast shadow. And then, same thing right over here for our stem. I'm going to start away from the stem. Oop, let me dry this. I just stuck my finger in it. Thank you so much, Chris. I appreciate you doing that. It does help when you've got links. <laughs> I have to say, someone chastised me for all the links I put on Tracy's live yesterday and said if she wanted the links on there, um, she would put them. And so I didn't respond to the person. I looked at their profile. They had like 12 friends, no pictures at all. So I'm thinking it probably was a fake account. Um, but anyway, just do it to be helpful. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up some now and right along here, I'm gonna paint in that stem, but I'm not touching the stem. There's actually a space between the stem and the background, and that's way too wet. Uh, wet. See how that just floated right on top? Way too much water. So you want it thin, but you don't want it to be so wet that it doesn't adhere to your piece. So let's do that again. Pull it down. Okay, let's dry that. I want to intensify that just a little. Okay. So, I'm going to take a paper towel to that one. I like it, but it's a little on the dark side. I just don't want it that dark. There we go. Okay. That, hello. Let's see how many times Sandy can paint cast shadows. <laughs> but again, it's transparent and it's thin, so I can come in and do this and get rid of it. I just don't want it to be harsh. I just want it to look like there's a cast shadow there. And I'm actually pleased with that. Okay, and then around that right side of that um, petal, that petal there, let's see if it's, okay, so see all that water on the ferrule? You wanna be careful of that. Make a huge mess for you. Do you, how do you know how dark to make the shadows? Very good question, Mary. Um, I would suggest, and what I do personally, is I lay it on very light at first, and then hold it back and look at it. If, it. if it looks like you can see that shadow, great, leave it. If not, you can let it dry and do a second coat of that Payne's Gray. Um, but, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that if you have that a little on the darker side, it's just going to give a really pretty lift and cast shadow to your piece. Okay, I always say don't be a wimpy shader. Okay, so a little on that side. Okay, that 
where it's wet is bothering me, but I'm going to see if it'll go away when I dry it. And then I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm talking about where those intersected. Okay, I still want there to be a line. I might have to come back in and soften that. Okay. Now, let's zoom out. I'll show you what I mean, how you can see that. So look at the leaf. Doesn't it look like that leaf is just sitting right on that cast shadow and it coming away from the tip is what gives it that lift um, off the surface. And I really, really love that, um, like on butterflies and bees, just to get a little bit more of that lift, okay? And for the antennas, you can do the same thing. Let me find my Micron. A little bit of that paint. And you can do a little antenna cast shadow if you want to. On that right side. And you can't really see anything there. Okay, just a touch, just a touch of paint. Not much. All right. And funny enough, this is another one that I don't have um, splatter on, so which is so funny. So let's kind of pull back and look and see. Okay, so on this stem, we definitely want to put a little bit of the pink, so a little bit of the quinacridone magenta, and just kind of here and there, but not everywhere. A little there, and rub your finger right over it, and then a little on that leaf as well. Okay, so just gives it a, a little bit more of an earthy look of that flower. And, oh, you can really see that pink on that stem. Love that. Just gives it a little bit more natural, earthy look. And of course our butterfly I think we're gonna call this done. I think so. What do y'all think? Um, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the, um, with the flower and how that came out and those brights. Um, this is my original. <laughs> and if you missed last week, I did the daffodil. Um, and silly me realized that I did the original on the back of my original. Um, so I have decided that this one is going to be given away as well. So all you have to do is like, comment, share, and, um, that'll be our third giveaway. Let's look at it with the frame. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. I love that. All right. The next one in our series is probably going to be the wild iris. Not sure that that's going to be uh, next weekend. Um, I have something else I'm working on that I might just throw that in the mix. Um, but thank you, Jeanette. Thank you, Denise. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Judy. All right, guys. Have a fantastic day. Am I forgetting to say anything or tell you anything? I am forgetting to tell you one important thing. Um, and the painting community community lost a very talented, very um, prolific designer, painter, um, had such a distinct voice if you've ever heard her speak, um, but unfortunately she passed yesterday and I know that the industry is um, definitely going to miss her. So Chris Thornton Deason, I hope you rest in peace my friend and it will be sad not to see you at conventions. So um, hello. Okay, have a great week. Um, for my members, I will see you guys tomorrow night because we are painting at seven o'clock tomorrow night. So um, thank you guys so much. Have a great week. And I will be back next Sunday with another lesson, 3 p.m. Again, not sure if it's gonna be the iris, but I will definitely post it on um, my website and also on Facebook here and on Instagram, not YouTube, hello. But if you're on YouTube, you can go follow me there, Sandy McTeer Designs. 
All right. Have a great week. Take care. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, again, if you want to get the e-packet, great. It's on my website along with a bunch of other products. All right. See y'all later. Bye.